Good morning. So in case you didn't get the email that we sent out last night, and we sent it out because we were waiting to have our second test results come through. Pastor Paul, when he was out visiting his mother last week in uh, St. Louis, um, got back and on Wednesday he heard that his mother had COVID and apparently somebody on her unit in the nursing home had gotten COVID, so they had tested everybody because she didn't have any symptoms, but apparently she had it, and so they were advised that he should get a test, and um, he got a test on Thursday morning and found out that he was positive. He had only been in the office for a short time Tuesday and a short time Wednesday, and um, an abundance of caution, everyone in the office has been tested twice and were negative. Um, and um, so we decided that we would do communion the old-fashioned way with the cups <laughs> and that we would keep our distance and um, do all of that just out of the abundance of caution, though none of us feel like we have it, but we're, we're being careful um, in light of all that. So other announcements. The cell tower meeting is Tuesday at the town hall, 7 p.m. If you want to come out, um, it pretty much, if you live in the Bel Air area, greater area, it does affect you because towers work off of each other. So like right now, obviously, if you try to get a signal, you're getting one from either down 543 or out 22 or up in Hickory. By having the tower here, you release those to have more volume. But the towers work that if one gets crowded, it goes to the next one. So it actually affects from going all the way down uh, 924 out of Bel Air South, up through Route 1, going north and over toward the college. And um, there'll be different folks from schools there saying why John Carroll can't get a signal and Southampton can't get a signal and how important it is. So we think everything should be fine. But just letting you know about that. Um, we will be starting the Christmas lights on Friday. So we have the sign-up sheets for um, helping with the lights and with cookies inside and with the uh, train garden. Please take time to sign up for that. We also have the Wish Stars out. And um, so we have 100 children that we're looking to give gifts to. And so if you can take a card or two and get those gifts, that would be wonderful. On Wednesday evening, we will be having Thanksgiving Eve worship service at 7 p.m. So if you want to come out and join us in giving thanks to God and remembering who gave us all the blessings that we have, um, join us for that. Starting next Sunday and Tuesday and maybe even um, some home studies, we will be doing a um, book called Because of Bethlehem by Max Licato as a Bible study. So that will be at 9.15 next Sunday. It will start the following Tuesday evening, and um, also uh, if people want to do it in their homes. So please let us know in your connection card and um, take part in that. And then, um, as I said last week, that this is the last Sunday of the church year. And so you'll again hear the readings about Christ's coming and his second return. Sometimes it can also be referred to as Christ the King Sunday. And so we have that final Sunday before we start again with a new church calendar uh, next Sunday with Advent starting already. It seems like it was just yesterday that we had Advent. Let's stand and begin our service. We make our beginning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Give attention to me, my people, and listen to me, my nation, for instructions will come from me, and my justice will become a light to the nations. And now, O oh Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Look up to the heavens above and gaze down on the earth below, for the heavens will disappear like smoke and the earth will wear out like a piece of clothing. Those who dwell in it will die in that manner, but my salvation will last forever, and my righteousness will never fail. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. Your decrees are trustworthy. Holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forevermore. as we live in the last days, waiting for Jesus to return. We are called to remember his promise and that we are his people. 
yet sometimes we forget what he has asked us to do. As God's children, we are called to build others up and draw them to you. Lord Jesus, we confess that we often fail to listen to your word and spirit. Forgive us and remember us. As God's children, we are urged to pray in the spirit. Lord Jesus, we confess that we often fail to be stilled with you in prayer and listen for your voice. Forgive us and remember us. As God's children, we are urged to keep ourselves in the love of God as we await the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we confess that we often fail to love others as you have first loved us. Forgive us and remember us. As God's children, we are urged to have mercy on those who doubt. Lord Jesus, we confess that we often fail to remember our baptism and extend the mercy we have in you. Forgive us and remember us. As God's children, we are urged to share our faith with others. Lord Jesus, we confess that we often fail to share your saving grace with others. Forgive us and remember us. As Jesus was on the cross, the thief next to him asked, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. As Jesus remembered the thief, he remembers that you are his beloved children. Your sins are no more. They have been paid for by Christ. They are forgiven. Amen. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Goodwill from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you graciously build us up in this most holy faith. Keep us in your love as we await your mercy that leads to eternal life. Lead us by your spirit to be merciful as you work through us to ensure that we all are saved. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Our Old Promise reading today comes from the book of Isaiah, the 51st chapter. Listen to me, my people. Hear me, my nation. Instruction will go out from me. My justice will become a light to the nations. My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way. And my arm will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment. And those who dwell in it will die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness will never fail. This is the word of the Lord.
Our new promise reading today comes from the book of Jude, the first chapter, verses 20 through 25. But you, dear friends, as you build yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting expectantly for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for eternal life. Have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire. Have mercy on others but with fear, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory without blemish and with great joy. To the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from a fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It is like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the sermon here. Christ. 
Christ is surely coming, bringing his reward. Alpha and Omega, first and last and Lord. Root and stem of David, brilliant morning star. Be your judge and savior, nations near. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be and remain with you all. Amen. Would you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, I speak to you this day via the wonderful blessing that we have of media that I am able to deliver this sermon today, not exactly the way I might have originally planned it, as many of you know that I have indeed been tested positive for COVID. Uh, the phrase that kept coming to my mind was a Latin phrase that I learned long ago, and if I'm pronouncing it anywhere near right, it was procula, procula, o esto profani. It sounds very Italian, actually it's earlier than that, it's Latin. And as I recall, and I did look it up to double check, it means basically, get away from me, O ye unclean, O ye profane. And it was what would be said to a leper or to someone that is not to be received into general society. Well, that's how I feel right now. So I'm getting quite a, a lesson indeed. But at least we're blessed that we have this opportunity to share this message through this media. With regard to our gospel lesson today, as I thought about the end times theme that we have on this Sunday, I the illustration that really came immediately to my mind about the return of our Lord Jesus Christ was something that happened to me about 20 years ago now. In fact, exactly 20 years ago this autumn, this fall. It was a time when I had gone down to Virginia Beach for a professional church workers conference and it was from our district synod, and it was a gathering of people there, of pastors, teachers, uh, directors of Christian education, and so forth. And I particularly remember the nature of that gathering that time, because as you might uh, recall, as I say 20 years ago, this was the fall of 2001. It was in October and November, just a few weeks after the attacks that had attacked our nation it, uh, in New York, Pennsylvania, and Washington. And this was really the first gathering of people that I had been to, and most of the other people likewise. Most of us had, like our COVID lockdowns, that time too was an anxious time, and people tended to stay home and not be out and about. But things were starting to open up, and here we were at this gathering, and mindful of all the warnings that were still out there, of perhaps other attacks could still happen, and uh, there was fears of being uh, bridges and so forth, being uh, booby-trapped and all this, which of course did not come true, but I just remember that time and the anxiousness of the time. 
what I remember was at a break in the proceedings, we were at this conference center at Virginia Beach, right at the beach, looking out over the water, and there was a large terrace, a concrete terrace, and the beach beyond and the water beyond that. And in a break that we had, everybody went on outside as it was a fairly mild day. And since people hadn't been able to be together for quite a while, there was a lot of conversation and laughter and talking and a bit of a coffee break there. And there were probably about a, over 100 people or more of the a whole larger group that had come on out to this terrace. What I remember is standing there and looking out over the water. And all of a sudden, there were some large military aircraft that started coming past us over the water beyond us, beyond the beach. And from those aircraft, military men and I guess women also, military personnel were parachuting out of these airplanes, as well as some other objects that were attached to parachutes that also came down and all of this was landing in the water in front of us. As it turned out, I don't know if they were the Marines or whatever their particular branch of service it was, but they landed there and the other items that were parachuting in, they landed the water and started putting these objects together. It turned out it was various rafts and I suppose some sort of amphibious, uh, amphibious vehicles and so on, and they were doing some sort of maneuver. But I can still remember the feeling on that terrace from all the people talking and chatting to suddenly there was a very big silence and everybody was looking up into those rather overcast skies and all of this happening in front of us. And you could have heard a pin drop until I heard one voice somewhere along the line there say, they are ours, aren't they? And everyone laughed at that point, somewhat of a nervous laughter, I think, because everybody had been thinking the same thing. What's this coming at us out of the skies? And is this friend or foe? Are we in safety or are we in trouble? Perhaps you can see how, as I thought about a theme of our gospel lesson and the return of our Lord Jesus Christ in glory, that particular image came to my mind. On that day in the fall of 2001, I was not expecting to see something descend out of the clouds before me. But it happened. And I saw that, and I will never forget it. So it is, as I think about the advent of our Lord, we are preparing for the celebration, observance of the advent season to come, the church year, ends at this Sunday, somewhat off from the calendar year. And we start the new church year liturgically this following Sunday with the first Sunday of Advent. And the ad Advent means the coming of our Lord. And of course, his initial coming, as promised by the prophets, he came as that baby in Bethlehem. But there's another Advent. Our Lord Jesus Christ is coming again. And this time, it will be something along the lines of what I was describing, because that is what was told to the apostles and what was written in the scriptures for our instruction, that as he had ascended into heaven, so in like manner he will return. This time it will not be in meekness or in that humility of a child, of a manger. This time, a king in glory, a judge descending on that final day of judgment. When would that be? When will that be? The text tells us no one knows except the Father. What day will it be? That put me in mind of a illustration that was shared with myself and our staff is discussing from a series of writings by the very popular Christian writer and pastor Max Lucado. Perhaps some of you are familiar with his writings and speaking. I enjoy reading what he has to write. He has a wonderful way with words and has very fine presentations of the gospel in speaking and in print. And one that is particularly appropriate for this was he referred to visiting members of his church, a member of his church at a particular point, a house call, so to speak, and as he 
when in there, he was reminded of a illustration and theme that he had used in sermons some years before that because he was talking about the advent of our Lord and the second coming, and he had used the theme, perhaps today. Perhaps today. Perhaps today the Lord Jesus Christ will come. And as that, he had pr printed out that simple message on paper that had been distributed to the congregation. This member that he was visiting, I don't know if it was a man or a woman, but this member had taken that paper and it evidently made a real impression on this member. This person had framed that piece of paper and had it hanging on the wall of their home. And when Lakato came to visit, he saw that hanging there and immediately recognized what it was from and thought it was rather striking that this member of this church would remember that theme and more importantly, had taken to heart the reminder that our Lord Jesus Christ is coming and sought to be reminded whenever he or she would look at that wall and that hanging on the wall, perhaps today, perhaps today the Lord will return. As is mentioned in that devotion too, that goes with that particular example, the reference is to the great scene of what we commonly call in the liturgical calendar, the presentation. When Jesus, as a baby boy, 40 days after his birth, is presented at the temple, and Simeon, an old man, had, was part of the priestly people there of Jerusalem, of the temple. He was evidently a man of great age, and he was entering into the temple at the same time that Mary and Joseph were bringing the baby Jesus for this presentation at the temple as according to the law of Moses. Simeon, we are told, it was revealed to him that he would not see death until he had seen the Lord's Christ, the chosen one, the Savior. The Holy Spirit had revealed that to him. And imagine, as an older man now, day after day, he had walked up that hillside all the way up to the temple in the highest place in the highest part of Jerusalem, which is in the highest part of Palestine and walking into those courts of the temple of God and each day thinking, perhaps today, perhaps today. And at that stage of life, he kept the faith. He still at that stage of life, aging and not having yet seen it, he still would enter in. And then he entered as Mary and Joseph with the baby Jesus were entering that day and this was the day. And he took the child up in his arms and made that glorious prophecy and the solemn prophecy to Mary, his mother, that there would be suffering that would follow from this, but also the glory and the words of which we sometimes call the nunc dimittis from the first words of now dismissed. Lord, now you may dismiss your servant. My eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. What a moment that was. It was that day. He had come into the temple and the fulfillment of the prophecy and the promise to him was there. Even so for you and for me, as we are at the end of a church year, and as we are on the threshold of a new church year, we also are invited to think in terms of the advent and the return and the promise that we have in scripture from Christ himself, from his apostles, and throughout the prophecies of scripture, that he is returning again in glory. And it will be different this time than the earthly ministry because now he comes in glory. We're reminded of that contrast as we look at the cross. The cross, in a sense, represents two different contrasting messages, it seems to me, in light of our theme today. For one thing, from the human standpoint, the cross represents humanity saying, we don't want anything to do with the way God seems to want to do things. We want to get rid of this message 
that this Jesus of Nazareth is giving us. It's too much trouble. That cross also shows to us that God doesn't think about things the way human beings think. Because who would have thought of the cross as an emblem of conquering, of salvation, of victory? But it is. And also, as I said, the cross is an emblem of angry humanity. In many ways, it was the people trying to force God into doing things their way. As the people there said to him, you who said that you would tear down the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross if you are the son of God. They wanted a king. They wanted glory. They were trying to either say, either get out of the way or do it our way. And the Lord would not do it that way. But as I said, there are really two aspects to it. The cross also tells a wonderful message coming from God. Because God on that cross, when you look at that, God is saying loud and clear, nothing that you do is going to keep me from reaching out to you. And when you look at that cross, you can also know there's a message from God who is saying at that cross, I am not interested in anything in this world, all the temptations that the devil might have tried to place before, like our Lord Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry, all the things that we think are so important in our world. God says, I'm not interested in them at all. He's the creator anyway, of course. And the Lord says, the only thing I am interested in is you. The cross also is the Lord holding up before you the way out of this fallen world into a new one, out of this dying life into an eternal life. It is the assurance to you that you have a Lord and Savior who would stop at nothing to cover you with his innocent blood, his perfect life, and his intercession before the Father on our behalf. And if there's any question about it, you need only look to that man on the cross and that emblem that was originally an instrument of torture and execution that is now the very doorway to everlasting life for you. And when you and I will enter into that and when the Lord calls us home, whether it's when he returns in glory, if we're still here, or at the time of our human death, perhaps today, and the Lord assures us we need not live in fear. We will survive that judgment because of his love and his covering. So how do you appropriate that for yourself? It's wonderful to see that cross and to hear what it means, but what does it mean for you and for me? I was reminded of a story I heard a long time ago uh, that comes to us from the Spanish-American War back in the 1890s. And one of my love of history, I always enjoyed reading about the great uh, man of the past, Teddy Roosevelt, one of our presidents at that time, of course, commanding the famous Rough Riders, as they were called, in that war in Cuba as it was taking place. The story unfolds that the famous lady, Clara Barton, who was the one who began the American Red Cross and the International Red Cross during the Civil War, she was still actively working. And this 30 years after the Civil War, she was organizing all sorts of things to help with those wounded and so forth at the front in the Spanish-American War. After the number of things had unfolded, Theodore Roosevelt approached her and was anxious because of his wounded men that he wanted more supplies. And he asked her point blank, would you, I need these particular supplies and the food and uh, bandages and whatever she had there. And he was stunned when she, he said, first of all, I want to buy these for my men. And she said, no, you can't. Theodore Roosevelt as a leader in general in the United States and as a colonel in this war was not used to being told something like that. And he stared in amazement. He said again, he's willing to pay for this out of his own funds. And again, Miss Barton replied, no, sir, I will not accept it. He was completely flummoxed and didn't know quite what to say. And finally, one of the aides smiled and looked at him and said, Colonel, 
He's saying, just ask for it. And the account is that Roosevelt smiled and suddenly realized the message that Miss Barton was trying to say. There was no charge for these materials and bandages and medicines. It was there for the asking. I love that image, and it seemed to me a very appropriate in light of the gospel message. When you look at that cross and what our Lord Jesus Christ is offering, he's not putting a price tag on it, and he's not making demands to you and to me of what we have to do to access that. All that really need be done, he said. I've paid for everything. Your salvation is accomplished in me. The debt is paid with my blood. Your judgment before God is covered with my life. And all the blessings of that, you need only ask for it. Or more accurately, he's just offering it. It's yours to refuse. The Holy Spirit will give you the power to receive it. And it's my prayer on this last Sunday of the church year that that's exactly what you would do. Because the challenge really is to face the reality of what our Lord Jesus Christ is saying in this passage, which seems so grim, but is actually full of promise and a promise of joy for those who will receive it. It doesn't make sense to this world, but in the Holy Spirit, you can see how God has planned a wonderful salvation for you. You and I don't expect to see God in a manger but it happened one day. And you and I will see all those prophecies that were fulfilled, so many of them, so complex over so many centuries. How could they all be fulfilled by one person? But Jesus Christ fulfills every single one of them, and it happened one day. And you don't expect to see the Son of God walking the dusty roads of this earth in Galilee and preaching good news of a kingdom. But it happened in those days of his ministry. And like me standing at Virginia Beach in 2001, you don't expect to see something, someone descending out of the sky. But it happened literally what I saw then. And I know it will happen literally someday when our Lord Jesus Christ in fulfillment of that prophecy that remains will return in judgment and in glory and always in love. It's going to happen. It's going to be glorious. And he's going to have the last word. And you need only look to the cross to know his love. And I pray know that you do not need to fear that judgment or that word. He is coming. He's coming in love as well as judgment. He's coming any day now. Perhaps today. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please stand as we continue with the pastoral prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, gracious and wonderful Lord, we praise and thank you for the ability to know you that you've given us through your Holy Spirit, for giving us the gift of forgiveness and eternal life, for making us your children. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you have us be always prepared for whenever that day occurs. We ask that you look down upon all those throughout the world that suffer because of their faith in you. Give them strength. Give them the ability to share that faith in special ways. Lord, we ask that you would look down upon all those that rule on this earth and that you would have them rule according to your love and your wisdom. Have them make decisions that aren't about themselves, but about those that they are charged with. Heavenly Father, we ask that you look down upon our own leaders in our country and that you bless our president and our Congress, our governor, 
and our local representatives and keep them in your care. Dear Lord, we ask that you look down upon all those that serve us in the military, those that serve us as first responders and police officers, that you protect them, that you be with their families as they have worries and concerns when they go out the door. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would look down upon those in our congregation who are hurting, who have sickness. Lord, we ask that you would bring your healing hand upon them. Lord, we ask that you look down upon those that are suffering from addiction and that you would be miraculously change them and their lives. Lord, we ask that you look down upon those who will be lonely during these holidays, those that are suffering from depression and loss, and that you would hold them in your hands and they would know that you are with them. Heavenly Father, we ask that you look down upon your congregation in this place and that we be a light in the community and that we share your love with others. We look forward to that day when you will come and that we'll be together with all the saints in glory. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We continue with this service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. So with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and beneficial that we should always give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. In these last days you have given us your spirit to govern our hearts and minds as we <coughs> await your glorious return. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentance and joy, we received the gift of salvation freely given by our Lord Jesus Christ, who took our sin and nailed it to the cross before rising again. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, keep us steadfast in your love while we wait for the mercy of your Lord Jesus Christ that leads us to eternal life. We give thanks for his redemption and ask that by your Holy Spirit, we faithfully receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. To you alone, O oh Father, be all glory and honor and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we take time now to open our communion and take out the bread and open the wine. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant given for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Um, Lord Jesus. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death and your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead and your ascension to heaven, and your coming for final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sin of the world away. O Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, have mercy. body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you steadfast in the true faith for life eternal. Amen. God, our Savior, we thank you for the holy meal of Jesus' body and blood and ask that you would build us up in the most holy faith, keep us in your love, and move us to be merciful to others as you are with us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so if you notice inside your bulletin is a little sheet perhaps today, and on the front of your bulletin, perhaps today, maybe you want to put this somewhere at your desk or on your refrigerator or somewhere where you'll think about that and the message that we know that Christ will return. And that'll be a glorious time, as Pastor Paul said, not a time to fear, but a time of joy and expectation. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look down upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.
Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.